What's going on, Geminites? Gem Mint here. We have a huge omnibus haul for you guys today. So many books came in at once and a lot of great titles. So uh, as always, these are not reviews of the stories. These hauls are just kind of a look at the contents of the omnibus and the overall construction. If you're looking for a place to purchase any of these omnibus, you got to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. They sell them up to 50% off cover price, immaculate packaging, super fast shipping, great customer service, and a bargain bin where you can get titles up to 90% off. If it's your first time ordering, mention Gem Mint Collectibles in the memo at checkout, and your next order will have free shipping if you're in the United States. Also, we're starting a brand new giveaway with this video. Check out the details here. On our road to 100K, we're doing some milestone giveaways every 2,500 subscribers. So this is phase two. We're giving away this Thanos bus by Sideshow Collectibles once we hit 95,000 subscribers. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the like button, drop a comment, and stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll give you some more details on the giveaway. All right, guys, enough of all that stuff. Let's jump right into the haul. The first book is the Transformers Volume 2, which is like unofficially Phase 3. So they had the Phase 1, the Phase 2 set, and this is Volume 2, which is called uh, A Change in Your Nature. This collects uh, Transformers 13 through 18, and then uh, 1 through 6 of Transformer Galaxies. This has a $50 cover price. It is an oversized hardcover, just like all those other IDW books. Let's take a look at some of the artwork. All right, so let's take a look at the artwork here. Volume two, The Change in Your Nature. I like this kind of playing card cover that they got going on here. Here's the spine and the back of the book here. All right, let's take a look. You typically get good artwork with these uh, IDW Transformers series. Check that, check that out. Was that Devastator? Yeah, that looks cool, man. All right, so that's Galaxies issue two. I gotta get caught up, man. I did. I read through phase one. I actually cracked phase two recently and started reading the first issue, and then I've just been so behind in my reading. But yeah, artwork is great. I always felt the artwork over uh, outshine the uh, story on these books, though. But it looks good, man. <laughs> See what kind of uh, bonuses they have in the back. Some variant covers. I like the 8 bit cover. All right, next up, we got a dope book, man. The Batman Omnibus by Paul Dini. Paul Dini, most known for writing uh, on the Batman animated series and creating one of the most iconic versions of Batman altogether. He did write for Detective Comics and for some Batman titles here for about the last 15 years. This collects stuff from like the mid-2000s all the way up until 2019. Uh, the actual issues it collects, it's I know Detective in the 800s, so Detective Comics 821 through 824, then 826 through 828, 831, 833 and 834, 837 through 841, 843 through 850, 852, and he wrote a story in Detective Comics 1000, which is the most recent stuff. He also did a DCU holiday special one, uh, Batman 685, he's got Batman Streets of Gotham, various issues uh, between issues 1 through 21. So, I mean, you get the idea. This has a $125 cover price. Nice Batman Omni. Let's flip through and take a look at some of the artwork here. All right, in the front and back for the Paul Dini Omnibus. Looks great. I like that version of Batman. Very cool. The inside flap just has a little bit about Paul Dini. Obviously one of the greats when it comes to Batman writers. We do have a wraparound cover for the actual omnibus, kind of like a watercolor slash sketch look. There are a, a couple of different writers on these issues. You have stuff like Don Kramer, Wayne Foucher, Derek uh, Fried Friedolfs. Let's take a look. So here is the table of contents. Like I said, you have stuff that starts in 2016 and um, stories as uh, recent as Detective Comics 1000 from, from last year. So you get a forward here by Paul Dini himself. And then we jump into the run. 
So we should have a couple of different looks here with the different creative teams uh, as far as the artists and such. Some Nightwing and Robin stuff. Here goes Catwoman. Who is that, Raiden? All right, guys, looks great. Let's see uh, if we have anything in the back here worth noting. Looks like you have some yeah, variants and extras, second printing covers, some sketches, interior, interior pages. That's cool. Looks like you have a good amount of uh, bonus material here. Some biographies on Paul Dini and the uh, artist. All right, guys. Next up, we got DC Comics, The Legion of Superheroes, five years later. Interesting premise. This is a book that started in 1989. And this is volume one of two that covers uh, through 1993 or so. Uh, collecting Legions of Superheroes 1 through 39. Uh, the first three annuals and Adventures of Superman 478 uh, with Timberwolf 1 through 5. $150 cover price. The Legion of Superheroes takes place in the 30th century where everything is perfect. But this is five years later where it's not so perfect. So that's kind of the premise here. Uh, let's take a look at, at the inside. All right, man. This is a big book for this Legion of Superheroes. Front cover with that big spine. And then here is the back. Looks great. The inside here just gives us kind of a roll call of the team. The who's who of the Legion. I guess you would call it a wraparound cover, just kind of the universe here. It's a thick book, so we'll see how the um, ribbon and how the spine holds up. Like most of these thicker books, you know, in the beginning, you're going to have to hold it. Here's a table of contents, all the different issues, and then issue one. Like I said, you got that late 80s, early 90s vibe. Once you get the book flat, it has some good... Um, some good binding to it. It's not too tight. Kind of minimal gutter loss. So the construction of this. And the Paul Dini one was good too. I, I didn't even speak on it because it, it was fine. But yeah. Quick look. Here's the Timberwolf series. Here's the back. Looks like kind of like some biographies on the characters. Kind of reminds me of the trading cards. Postcards here, actually. That's it. All right, guys. Jumping over to Marvel Comics, we've got Conan the Barbarian, the original, uh, the original Marvel Years Volume Four. Cranking out these Omnis. This has a $125 cover price. Collects Conan the Barbarian, 84 through 115. Annuals 4 and 5. And What If 13. Let's go ahead and take a look at Conan. This is actually uh, the DM variant, which is my favorites. All right, so this is volume 4 of the original Marvel years. They also have two Savage sort of Conan books. So this is the sixth one that we're taking a look at. Love those DM variants. I love when they have all the covers on the back. I think that looks great. This one collecting mostly Conan issues. Oh, actually all, except for the what if, right here. So, some info on Thor here. You get uh, biographies on Roy Thomas and John Buscema. And then they have a similar hardcover on all these Conan books, which I like. I like it when they all have similar designs. Let's see here. It does have the rounded spine. Roy Thomas giving an intro here. It's a hell of an intro, Roy. Then we're jumping in with issue 84. That's cool they have the letters pages in here too. They tend to do that with the older Omnis. So it's a thinner Omnibus. You're not going to have binding issues. Rounded spine, so that should make everybody happy. And as you can see, pages lay flat and no gutter loss. Bronze Age, Conan, stuff from Marvel. If you grew up on this, 
man, you got to be happy as hell that Marvel is uh, printing so much of this content. They got the license from Dark Horse, and they have not slowed down since. Give you an idea. So there's a lot of content here, guys. It's afterward. And that's it. All right, guys. Marvel, the Golden Age Omnibus Volume 2. I thought it was pretty cool how they came out with this since they had a Volume 1, which was uh, an older Omnibus. Uh, this collects uh, Marvel Mystery Comics 13 through 24, heavily double dips with the Golden Age uh, Submariner, Human Torch, and the Golden Age by uh, Simon and Kirby. See, those collected these same issues plus more, but only the stories from the characters of the title, like only the Human Torch stories or only the Submariner stories. This just collects the straight up entire issue of these books. So it's kind of like you either grab the Golden Age Omnibus Volume 1 and 2 and that's it, or you just grab those other Golden Age Omnis one or the other you don't you don't want to really do what i did and grab both but i'm a completionist so i had to do it uh let's flip through some of this old school golden age marvel stuff all right here we go golden age marvel front back and spine all the covers look so similar back in the day right <laughs> a lot of human torch submariner stuff and I, like i said collects 13 through 24 which has been printed before Talks about these early superheroes and the creators. There is a ton of them here, including Jack Kirby, Joe Simon, Bill Everett, and more. Kind of a plain look on the actual hardcover itself. Old school Timely Comics cap shield on the back. What do you got? Human Torch and Toro. Table of Contents. Roy Thomas again, giving an intro. So pretty cool. I do still like the history aspect of these books and the fact that Golden Age comics reprinted with uh, modern technology. The colors are super bright. Everything is clean. Nothing is worn. It doesn't have a, you know, a, a newspaper old comic book look to it. It looks like uh, brand new. Just obviously, the dialogue and the art is a little dated. But great history to have. And like I said, you kind of have a choice if you want to just go with this book and Volume 1 uh, as opposed to the individual character-driven Golden Age books. Or you could just do like me and get them all. Let's see what we got in the back here. Some ads. I think there's a house ad. Yeah, these are all advertisements. I like the updated artwork for Marvel 1. This is by Frank R. Paul and Dean White. This is by Alex Sh uh, Schoenberg and Richard Isanov. Didn't Alex Ross do one too? Anyway, that's that. All right, jumping over from some of the oldest Marvel titles to some of the newest, man. The Absolute Carnage Omnibus by Donny Cates. Uh, I have a kind of a personal connection to this run, man. I met Donny Cates while he was writing this before it came out. He was super excited about it. He cited uh, Carnage, like Mind Bomb, as some of the inspiration for this kind of like horror esque Carnage run. Um, I think it it fell a little flat compared to the hype and compared to some of his other work, uh, especially um, with all of the tie-ins. A lot of it was unnecessary and kind of made the story feel like it was being uh, dragged out a little bit. But the main story is good. Some of the tie-ins I do enjoy. And the overall premise of this carnage, uh, you know, hunting down everybody who's ever wore a symbiote, ripping out their spines to grab the codex and kind of kind of uh, Jet Li the one style. Get rid of any other symbiote wearer. Uh, but that's the most I'm going to give you as far as the, the review here. Uh, this collects the main story, the, uh, the one through five of Absolute Carnage, and a ton of tie-ins, man. We'll look at the tie-ins when we do the review. $100 book, Absolute Carnage. Okay, so Absolute Carnage Omnibus. Not to be confused with an Absolute Edition. Love the artwork on the cover. I think that looks great. He's got all the Marvel heroes caught up in his web. And here's the back. A lot of people have worn the symbiote over the years. So, man, there was a lot of people that was on Carnage's hit list. I wonder if this has the Web of Venom stuff. So you can see the main story... Carnage vs. Deadpool, Lethal Protectors, Miles Morales, Scream, Captain uh, Marvel. Let's see here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it has the uh, 
Web of Venom stuff, which was like the resurrection of Carnage. So, Carnage the Ultimate Showdown. So, I like how, you know, this ties in with Noel. I'm loving Donnie Kate stuff. So cool to see him get an omnibus here. Very nice wraparound cover with kind of the carnage drones or zombies or whatever you want to call it. With the no symbol on their head. Carnage gets like the venom symbiote symbol on his chest or the no symbol I should say. Got the blood red interior. I do like how this brought back Scream. I was always a fan of that symbiote. So this is the free comic book day issue, kind of introducing it. Yeah, so it doesn't have the Web of Venom stuff. Then Absolute Carnage 1. So this brought back a lot of stuff, like it brought back Ravencroft. Um, man, I love the artwork here. What was that, Ryan Stegman, I believe? I think they're still doing Venom together, right? I thought it was going to have a bigger payoff. I'm not going to spoil anything here, but um, I mean, if you're if you're a dude like me that grew up in the '90s, reading Maximum Carnage and stuff like that, I mean, you got to pick it up. It's not the best story ever, but it's fun. The artwork is cool. I'm about to reread this one day. I still have all the single issues for everything this collects, so. I plan on giving that away. I got to see what's going on. Yeah, they also brought Demo Goblin back. Demo Goblin never gets any love, man. So variant covers in the back. As you can imagine, a ton of them. Addy Grana, Venom, love that. There's some more variants. The action figure uh, figure variants are always cool. A redid Bagley cover. This was the original cover for ASM 361. That was cool. Kind of like it better than the one they went with. Carnage always looked at, he always looked like twisted around. Codex variant. So you get a ton of extras here, mostly variant covers. Hmm. The Life Foundation symbiotes. This is the Carnage vs. Venom variant. And guys, the last book of the haul is the last book of the Spider-Man Clone Saga. This is the Ben Riley Omnibus Volume 2. Uh, this is super cool for me because before I got into Omnibus, uh, I was getting trade paperbacks. And I had all 12 trade paperbacks for the Clone Saga and the Ben Riley Saga. There were six in each. They broke those down into four Omnis. And like I said, this is the last one. So uh, like it says here, the shocking conclusion of the Clone Saga um, $125 cover price, collects a ton of issues Dur during the 90s. This is when I was a kid, and you had Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man Unlimited, all these like one-shots and tie-ins and uh, maximum clonage and all that kind of stuff. So we'll look at that more when we do the overhead of this. All right, and the dust jacket here, you got the Green Goblin with Peter Parker and Ben Riley with the new Spider-Man suit. I was always a huge fan of of this costume too guys you have all of the covers in the back shocking conclusion to the end of the clone saga which was most like Ryder sent mostly which really was like Ryder saying psych Peter Parker still the original spider-man so sensational spider-man 4 through 11 amazing spider-man spider-man spectacular spider-man spider-man unlimited spider-man redemption got a daredevil issue with spider-man team up couple of issues Spider-Man Revelations trade paperback, the Osborne Journal, Spider-Man 101 Ways to End the Clone Saga, and Spider-Man Dead Man's Hand. So this is telling you where we are with the whole Clone Saga and the creative team. Tom DeFalco was the editor, J.M. DeMattis. All right, Dan Jurgens was here, Mark Bagley, obviously, Sal Buscema, John Romita Jr., I was always a huge fan of this um, double page spread. I, I thought this was great. This was also a trade paperback cover. Very cool. And here we go. A lot of people were really like worried if they were going to print this, but you know, Marvel, they don't really let us down when it comes to these newer releases. I guess 
I caught myself because where's the Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 2? <laughs> but anyway, um, man, I mean, I grew up, this was like what I knew as a kid. You know, I, I grew up reading like Maximum Carnage and then uh, the Clone Saga stuff. I was into it, but like readers that were older than me hated this storyline. I think anyone that was born before the uh, 80s disliked this, this run. Just because of them kind of trying to retcon Spider-Man history. And Spider-Man is the actual clone. Or no, he's really Ben Riley is the clone like you know you thought he was or whatever. But I love the 90s artwork. I like the era. That's the era that I grew up in. And it looks like not much as far as bonus material here. But you get a ton of issues. Alright guys, that's it for this monster haul. This was like over a $500 haul, man. So uh, you don't get that too often. I think a lot of stuff got pushed back and then everything just kind of like accumulated for one big release day. Let me know which one of these you will be picking up in the comments down below. And let me know which one's a hard pass. Let's go ahead and get into the details of the current giveaway. Alright guys, in order to be eligible for the giveaway, you have to be a subscriber to the channel. So go ahead and hit the notification bell, hit the like button on this video, and most importantly, drop a comment below. Once we hit 95,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a random video where I promoted this giveaway and use a random YouTube comment generator to draw a winner. You could be any age, any location, we will ship this worldwide, so go ahead and comment down below to enter. All right, guys, as always, thank you for watching. You know I appreciate it. Uh, check out my other omnibus hauls in this playlist below. And stay minty fresh. Peace.